Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well and having a fantastic week. Today we're going to be talking about some of the products you really should not be buying for your birds. I know the title is quite dramatic, but I really do want to stress that some of these products are really quite dangerous for your birds and there's just no need for them as well. So we're going to go through a little list. Um, this may end up being made into a series because there are so many dangerous products for birds on the market. But for now, I've just picked out a few that really, when I think about the topic, stand out. Um, but if this does turn into a series, then I'm sure you'll see in the title it's part one of however many. So um, I'm just going to get into it. If you have any thoughts on the topics, um, if you have any other suggestions for other products that you would not recommend for other bird owners, leave them down in the comments below. But I suppose we'll just get straight into it. And while we do, Pickles is just going to hide in my hair, which is quite adorable. Um, so some of these products you may already be aware of that are just undesirable for birds to have. Some you may be like, oh my goodness, why shouldn't I have that? Which may link onto the first one, which is I do not recommend treat sticks or bells or any of those kind of, I'll put pictures here as we go along the video, but treat sticks and bells are not good for your birds. Now we all like a treat, obviously, but there are better choices. Um, if you actually have a look at the ingredients list of these treat sticks and bells and things, they're just basically made up of loads of fatty seeds, honey, sugar, gelatin in a lot of them, and they don't disclose whether it's, you know, animal product gelatin or plant-based gelatin. Um, and actually the ingredients list are always really unclear. I actually checked before this video and they're very nondescript with what's in these bells. The problem I have with them is, yes, wild birds can have treats like sunflower seeds, that kind of thing, which are usually found in these bells. These, these bells and these treat sticks are huge and they're not just gonna take a couple of seeds, have a little nibble and let it go. They're gonna gorge themselves on the, these sticks and they are just, not healthy. You can offer these seeds in another way. You can make your own treats. I'm actually going to be doing a video on how to make DIY treats at home. So if you'd like to uh, stick around to see what I'm going to be making, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any videos when they come out. There have also been cases that I've seen firsthand where these birds are being given these treat sticks and bells and they gorge themselves on them and then it just triggers hormonal behaviour, which we all want to avoid when we have birds because it's not a fun time. Um, and as I said, the ingredients are usually very low quality, they're full of sugar, and no one needs a parrot full of sugar because they're already like toddlers, let alone, you know, toddlers full of sugar. It's kind of crazy. So I really would avo avoid buying these kind of treat sticks or take the time to have a look at the ingredients list. If there's no sugar in there, and you can identify the seeds in there, or they're very clear, or they have slightly healthy ingredients, then sure, that should be okay. For example, I think Northern Parrots do these like power bars. I think they used to be made by marriages, but now they're made by Northern, Northern Parrots. I'll see if I can link them below. And they actually have some pretty decent ingredients in, so if you were gonna offer some, I would normally break off a little piece and give it to my birds, like a nutri size piece, which again is another fine treat to give to your birds as a treat. Um, but yeah, as I said, most of these treat sticks are full of sugar. Please look at the ingredients list for anything that you're feeding your birds. And I would just avoid these and choose better alternatives for your birds. Now, if you've been watching my videos for a while, you'll probably know the next one that I'm gonna be talking about, which are happy huts, cozy huts, tents, anything of that description that is some sort of fabric or even natural material to enclose space for your bird to be snuggly in. Now, quite often we anthropomorphize our animals and we you know put human emotions on them and that kind of thing and we think oh they need a nice cuddly cozy place to sleep because it'll be really nice for them and they really don't need it in fact most parrot species with the exception of a few for example the golden conure most parrot species will just sleep on a branch in the world they don't live in you know tree trunks with you know cozy stuff in there they literally just sleep on a branch and they'll cozy up to a mate if they want to keep warm or snuggle or anything like that they don't need these huts and many of you may already be aware they do actually promote hormonal behavior so being in this enclosed space does feel like a nest to a lot of birds and it just makes them uh, exhibit hormonal behavior makes them aggressive obviously egg laying comes to that if you have a female which you want to avoid at all costs they just don't need them the other issue as well is the potential for crop impaction. Now, that is where they would be chewing off the little bits of fabric because as we know, parrots like to chew, uh, and they would actually be ingesting some as time goes on, and that leads to a big impaction in the crop, and that's quite serious, so it's best to be avoided. There are some that sort of claim that they can't be you know, a problem if they're ingested or some that are made out of natural materials. The problem with those ones is they're still promoting hormonal behavior, so I would avoid them at all costs. None of our birds have them. And they're really, really unnecessary for your birds. 
Um, just because a pet shop sells something doesn't mean that it's safe for your bird. That's another thing I want to stress because there are lots of unsafe toys on the market and things that I'm going to get into later on in the video. But um, just for these products, please, please, please chuck them in the bin. They don't need them. Now, the next topic on my list is one that I'm really passionate about and I have made a whole video on this, so I'll leave a link down in the description and a card at the top about pellets and specifically coloured pellets. Pellets that are all different kinds of colours and they look really visually appealing, they look like cereal. They are not healthy for your birds. I'm yet to find a colourful pellet that is healthy for a bird. If you have a look at the ingredients list, the very first ingredient is the most abundant and then as it goes on it's less abundant and quite often they're made up of corn, soy and wheat and then you've got sugar, salt and unsafe dyes in there as well so they are never a good choice for your birds. In fact we don't feed pellets as part of the main part of our bird's diet, which I've said many times. It's mostly based on vegetables, sprouted seeds, legumes, grains, um, a little bit of fruit a couple of times a week, um, and then some healthy seed for training, foraging, that kind of thing. So we don't use pellets as the main part of the diet. They aren't 100% necessary, but they could be a treat as well. If we do offer pellets as like a part of our evening meal or something like that, it's usually Tops or Harrisons. They are the only two that I recommend. And as I said, if you want to learn more about why you should really steer clear of these kind of colourful pellets, um, please make sure that you go and check out the link in the description because it's so, so important. The next topic is quite a highly debated one um, around some of the parrot forums that I lurk on at the moment, and that is... Uh, the way that people are attaching their toys to their cages and for example uh, a lot of clips can be unsafe in the wrong circumstances and some are totally unsafe completely and so on and so on. One of the things I wanted to talk about specifically are these types of clips. Hopefully you can see that there. They have a sort of spring action there that opens up the clip and that is super super dangerous for your bird because as we know our birds like to get their beaks into everything and they can open up this clip get it caught on their beak and really really hurt themselves now there are loads of different clips on the market the sort of c and d rings whatever they're called pair rings that kind of thing they can be safe when used in the right way some people really do scaremonger about them but it depends on your individual bird we use them with our birds, I check them every single day, I keep a close eye on my birds because I'm with them pretty much all day every day when I'm um, working at home or anything like that, we are there with the birds so we can see if they're taking too much of an interest in a, in a clip or something like that, we'll change the way that we um, attach a toy on but we haven't had that experience so far. You need to make sure that your clips are fastened, secure, and that your bird isn't showing an interest in trying to undo them. If they do, what I would recommend is attaching your toys either by uh, cable ties, if you can cut them safely so they can't get to the sharp bits, or by using uh, paper rope or safe rope for your birds. Um, some people claim that there are like plastic rings that you can use that are safer, but I have seen birds get their beaks caught on plastic rings, it gets stuck on the lower mandible, and it's really not good. So, there's, a, as I said, there's a lot of scaremongering out there about clips, but this one specifically and other carabiners like it are dangerous. Please throw them out. The only reason I have one is because David actually did a toy haul. Uh, make sure you head over to his channel to go and watch it. We didn't realise that one of the toys that we bought came with this, so I thought I would just show you in the video because um, why not? The next items on my list really stem from um, poor knowledge and old timey kind of bird keeping where the knowledge hasn't necessarily advanced and people haven't moved on from this outdated kind of view of how to keep birds and that is for oyster shell grit and sand parrots don't need them they're not like other birds which have like a gizzard and they have to collect up stones and then grind the food like chickens and ducks for example they need that kind of grit parrots are what's known as hook bills so their beak is literally like a hook and that means that they can actually hull seeds they can take the hull off the seeds and eat the innards unlike other birds which can't which have like a more of a straight beak that's why birds don't need any kind of grit or sand or anything like that in their diet because they don't need it they don't need to grind up that food because they do it with their beaks now quite often if you are giving this um it can cause crop impaction like many of the bad things that are sold for birds on the market so you really don't want to be offering this you can offer eggshells crushed up if you're feeding eggs to your birds as uh, a way of offering calcium because i know people say oh i give it because of calcium that's fine you can do that um, a couple of times a week 
but ideally you want to be getting that calcium from the vegetables in your bird's diet really lovely dark green, leafy greens green vegetables often packed with calcium and that's where you want to be getting that source of vitamin from rather than from um something that's potentially going to cause your bird problems now whenever i mention the next one i actually get a lot of very angry comments which surprises me i suppose it comes again from not having all of the information and that is unsafe bells again i do have a bell here because we are taking it off toys i think only one of all of the toys that we have for our birds and we have a lot if you've seen any of our vlogs we kept a bell on one of them purely because we always supervise the boys when they have it and they seem to enjoy jingling just that one toy but we've given them bells before and they're not bothered but these ones here they are stainless steel um which is good because many of them aren't stainless steel if you have a bell i know you want it because if you have a bell that is colored in any way you can get like pink ones and blue ones but in the same shape they're not going to be stainless steel they're going to be coated in something that's going to be dangerous for your birds However, these ones are still dangerous. They have a clapper inside and birds have been known to remove the clapper and accidentally swallow it, which obviously we don't want. Or birds can actually cut their tongues um, on these sorts of bells. So again, it's really not necessary. It's one of those things where people just assume that birds need to have bells in their toys. They really don't. Um, you can get alternatives. If a bird likes to make a lot of noise, you could get, um, I've seen toys again on Northern Parrots and other sites where it's like a set of stainless steel measuring cups um, on a long chain and then they can kind of rattle those around and it eliminates the risk of any kind of issues with um, swallowing things and cutting themselves. So I think that'd be a good alternative, but for some reason, just about every toy in the market these days, unless it's from, you know, some of the really great brands are just, they've got a bell on them, they're just unnecessary. Um, it's just one of those things that they don't need. Parrots should be having toys that they can destroy, with the exception of, for example, some of the plastic ones that we have for outside of the cage time or training or skits that we do. We only give our birds toys that they can shred because that is what they are designed to do. They are destructive and they need to get out all of that energy onto these toys uh, so they're not doing it on your furniture as well. Um, so if you have any toys that have been in your bird's cage for a really long time, either your bird may not know how to play with toys, in which case I've got a video on that. I'll leave a link down in the description or perhaps the materials are just not suitable for your bird. For example, you can actually get wood that is just too hard for your bird. Some of the big wooden block toys are just not suitable for our little birds, like Konyo's cockatiels, budgies, because the wood's just too hard and they don't want to chew it. Whereas you can get toys that are made out of balsa or uh, yucca wood, which are quite soft, uh, and it means that they can shred them quite easily, which is what you want to be looking for for small birds. The next topic on my list are vitamin supplements. So many people feed vitamin supplements. We see it a lot um, when we do our consultations with Best Behaved Birds, our parrot behaviour consultation business. We see a lot of people and they tell us all about their diet and everything and they feed sometimes a really great diet and then they feed a vitamin supplement on top of it, which seems a bit strange because you're getting all these great vitamins from your bird's diet and then you're overloading with vitamins from a vitamin supplement and then quite often you're also giving a pellet which is then full of vitamins so you have you kind of run the risk of almost giving too much of different types of vitamins which can cause hypervitaminosis which you really don't want in your birds so chuck out those vitamin supplements you should really only give vitamin supplements if you've been advised by your vet that your bird is lacking in one and that they need them they don't need them on a day-to-day -day basis if you're feeding your bird a really healthy balanced diet it's just totally unnecessary and can cause more problems as well I'll actually be making a more in-depth video on this subject at some point um, so you can get a bit more information um, but I just thought I'd throw that out there because I see it so often it's just one of those products that's really pushed by uh, pet stores manufacturers you know you think you need these uh, supplements and you really don't so definitely don't feed those and focus more on trying to feed a nice fresh exactly a nice fresh balanced diet the next topic is another highly controversial one and it always brings out some quite full-on opinions and that is mirrors um some people think oh it's great my bird doesn't mind the mirror he really likes it or you know he's not bothered by it so i'll keep it in there and then again for examples that we've seen in some of the consultations it really does make birds hormonal because they don't understand that the bird in the mirror is them they think it's another bird and they either try to mate with it and get really stressed that they can't access that bird or they want to fight it and again they get really stressed that they can't access this bird that seems like it's right there but they just don't have that concept of mirrors and you'll know that as well if you have birds flying around the house sometimes they don't understand the concept of mirrors and they do fly into them so 
Mirrors are something I would never recommend for a bird. Again, they don't need them. If you're doing it to try and keep your bird company, please try and focus on perhaps rescuing or looking for a great breeder to find uh, another companion, potential companion I should say, because not all birds get along, but a potential companion for your bird. They are flock animals and they do so much better when there's more than one of them. Um, but yeah, they really don't need the mirrors. It's It causes more problems than necessary and as I said, if you're thinking that your bird's lonely, you should be looking to get them a companion because it's so much better for their mental well-being as well as uh, giving them a really enriching experience and helping out another bird as well. Now, the final product on my list for today's video are bird shampoos and sprays. I've seen some very disturbing videos on social media of people essentially giving their birds bubble baths with these products again that you can buy from different bird stores and they don't need it again with all of these products they just don't need them uh, it actually again can cause more harm than good to be putting these products and chemicals and that kind of thing on your bird's skin all your birds need to be sprayed with is water that's what's going to keep their feathers and skin in good condition there are occasions where you could potentially spray them with some avian safe tea that's cooled down um, but I would not spray them with anything else sold on the market unless you've been advised to do so by your vet. It's not going to improve the feather condition. Once the feathers have grown out, they're essentially dead. They have no connection to the body, so you can't improve the condition of them in that way. You need to wait for the bird's feathers to molt out. I see so many sprays that say it's good for feather condition, feather shine, molting is another one. It doesn't help. Just spray your bird with... Uh, very cool or lukewarm water that's really going to do wonders for your bird or take them into a steamy bathroom uh, where they're not going to hurt themselves if uh, they're not used to being in the bathroom and it's going to be really good that humidity on their skin and for their feathers but all of these sprays are not good for your birds they just don't need them they're again another marketing thing products created just for people to spend money and I would never advise getting any of these products unless you're treating a medical condition advised by your vet so that brings me to the end of the video. I hope you found it useful and perhaps there's been some uh, ones on this list that you weren't aware of or hadn't really thought about before. Let me know in the comments your thoughts if you have anything you'd like to add to the list. I may, as I said, make a part two to this um, or any, any other thoughts you have on things that are dangerous for birds. But again, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you being part of my community and my channel. If you haven't already, please do consider subscribing because then there'll be so much more bird content. I've got a, a list as long as my arm for videos. Um, so it'd be really cool to have you on board because we have such a wonderful community here we post in the community tab all the time with lots of interactive things so it'd be lovely to have you as part of the community if you aren't already and for my current subscribers again thank you so much for being here and watching my videos I really really appreciate it but for now from me and Miss Pickles thank you so much for watching take care and see you later